question two. This question is, uh, is a new question in the paper five. And it's about the rate of reactions which using the permeable gel and chemino fork. So for this one, uh, first, uh, we need to prepare the setup uh, uh, in the figure 2.1, which is the Petri dish with the permeable gel. After that, cut a hole in the center and pour the chemino 4 solutions into it. After that, uh, because chemino 4 is purple color, so uh, this solution it will diffuse. It will diffuse to all directions. And we need to measure the diameter from time to time. So the time that used is three minutes interval. So it means three minutes, six minutes, nine minutes, 12 minutes, and so on. And the diameters, of course, the diameter of the spot is measured and recorded. And after that, uh, when it's reached three successive equal measurement, then, uh, then uh, it stopped. Um, so in table 2.1, as you can see, the after it get this 4.1 cm means the three equal successive value. So the experiment stopped. And in this uh, uh, question means the, the graphs later uh, going to use time and the diameter that increase, not the diameters of the color means uh, it's going to be used the second, the pre uh, means the later one minus the previous one. So uh, you get uh, the one that increased. So the, the diameters increase. So use this one, okay, and this one to plot the graphs. Okay, after that, uh, you should get something like this. You can uh, later try it, try to plot it by your own. So it's actually a curve. So you just plot. Uh, remember to include the initial one, right? So after that, uh, you up, after that you get a curve, not a straight line, and uh, try to draw, draw the best fit line, uh, similar like this. You can uh, draw better than me. So after that, uh, need to draw a tangent at the fifteen uh, minutes. We'll discuss this one later, and uh, obviously. Uh, there is an anomalous point uh, at uh, this 18 minutes. Uh, okay, so now let's start the question. Okay, so for part B1, uh, on the graph circle, the point which you believe to be the most anomalous, okay, I already told you, is the one that at 18 minutes, 18 minutes here. Suggest a possible explanation for this abnormally. Actually, there are two directions. Uh, so this one is the first one. Diameter measured to a Lee um, means this one is 15 minutes. This one is 18 minutes. So from here, we can see that the value is actually uh, quite close to 15 minutes. Means it can be this direction means it's actually uh, around here. This value is actually around here. So means it's telling us that uh, the student actually measured the diameter okay, before 18 minutes. Means that the measurement is too early. Okay, that's why you get this answer. Diameter measured too early. Uh, because this value is actually uh, belongs to the earlier one. Or you can actually uh, use another direction here. So means at 18 minutes is supposed to be here. Uh, so now it's actually what what is measured is lower than expected. Uh, so that's that's why we have this answer. The recorded diameter is smaller than the actual diameter. Uh, again, this one is the most common things that the student did. Okay, do not use timing start too early because this is a continuous experiment means it's three minutes each time non-stop 
So if timing start too early, then it will affect all readings. So therefore, don't use this. So just use this one and this one. The means the diameter measured too early. Uh, the diameter measured for the 18 minutes just now, right? This one. Uh, this one is uh, really based on uh, your graphs. It means draw a suitable tangent uh, to the line at uh, time equal to 15 minutes. Calculate the gradient of your tangent. Uh, and then uh, show the coordinates 1 and 2 and calculate the gradient delta y over delta x uh, so for mine one uh, I it must be from the line uh, from from this line the draw the tangent at 15 uh, means here right so draw a tangent after that you must get two coordinates from the line from the gradient so after that uh, you get your own values so for mine, I get 0 0.118 cm per minute, right? So just use delta y over delta x. Part D, select appropriate data from 2.1 and calculate the average rate of diffusion of KMNO4 in cm per minute. Uh, this one uh, is better for us to uh, exclude the uh, last two readings means in the table as you can see after 30 minutes the value is actually same so same uh, same so we don't use this one right so we just use from 0 to 30 okay what is the cm that increase it just to 3.6 so therefore, you get this value, 3.6 over 30 minutes, you get 0 0.12 cm per minute. Part E, identify the independence variable in this experiment. Uh, the independence is the one that we can choose. Once we choose, then uh, the others means the dependence variable need to follow. Uh, in this experiment, we always can choose different time. Time that used to measure the diameter. When we use different time, the diameters that form is actually different. Right, so this is a very easy question. Part F, suggest how the experiment could be made to be more reliable. Uh, this one, uh, you need to repeat the experiment to show the results they are reproducible. Means you repeat the whole experiment with the same interval see whether you can get back the same diameters or not. Uh, so this is the, the one that uh, can make it more reliable. If let's say you can get back the diameter, uh, uh, very close uh, values to what uh, obtained in this table 2.1, uh, then it's reliable, means it's uh, reproducible. Okay, part G, another compound of potassium, which is colored, uh, uh, is the potassium dichromate, this is orange color, uh, and its molar mass is 294. Uh, so recall back uh, the, the KMNO4, uh, in the question already given, molar mass is 158 for KMNO4. So the potassium dichromate, uh, its molar mass is actually larger. When a compound with a larger molar mass means the size is larger, and therefore when it moves, is move slower. Uh, that's the key. Uh, so part one, predict how the graphs obtained for the potassium dichromate would differ from the one that obtained in KMNO4. Uh, so what we expect is the KMNO4 will actually move slower because it's larger. Therefore, the graphs that we obtain will have lower gradient than the KMNO4. Means the rate of the diffusion is lesser. Uh, so that's why it has lower gradient. Uh, so KMNO4 is smaller, it can move faster, so it's larger gradient. Right. Okay, this is the, the, the key, uh, it's about the size. Part 2. Apart from the temperature, state one variables that must be controlled when compare the risk of diffusions between this potassium dichromate and KMNO4. Uh, so one thing that very com very important is concentration. 
concentration of these two solutions must be the same if we want to compare right so this is the most important thing of course volume also need to be controlled huh? uh, but the concentration is very important we must make sure two concentrations same then they have a fair comparison part h1 another other than wearing the eye protection state one safety precaution the student should take if they use uh, potassium dichromate because di potassium dichromate in the question already told uh, this uh, is corrosive it's corrosive so in order to protect ourselves other than uh, eye protection we must protect our hands so therefore we must wear gloves nowadays uh, better don't say to, uh, just wear gloves because gloves you have different types so it's better for you to put chemically resistant gloves then is the better answer part two another student suggests that to compare the rates of diffusion between the potassium dichromate and cheminophore it would be easier to place the solid crystal of each of these compounds into the holes uh, in the petitis so suggest two practical problems that this would cause uh, so this is not a good uh, way to do the experiment because the solid we don't know whether it dissolves or not whether it's soluble or not uh, that, that's the one if let's say we we make it into solution we are kind of like know that it's dissolved well and it can diffuse well later right so the first thing is the solid crystal may not dissolve in gel so if it's not dissolved how to diffuse later right so the first one second the solid might diffuse lower in gel means when we use solution it can diffuse faster the solid because it's still not really dissolved like I told you just now it might diffuse slower than the solution now, there's a two uh, general uh, answer that you can give right thank you